Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. Before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I would be very thankful to you. I just finished re-watching, because everyone's seen this, 2009 Avatar, written and directed by James Cameron, uh, which actually features Sigourney Weaver as one of the uh, star cast. So, uh, that's that, that was really cool to me, because it has been a very, very... It was a very long time ago that they first worked together, so to see them still working together just made me happy, but uh, yeah, so Avatar is a technological marvel. Uh, when it came out in 2009, it was honestly like beyond our comprehension that movies could look this good. It was just insane. Uh, so that's where most of the points are coming from for my rating. Uh, it is definitely going to get some bonus merit points. Um, there are, there are obviously better sci-fi epics to watch today, but this is a very important one and it was a big deal when it came out. So that's kind of where the sympathy points are coming in. But instead of calling them sympathy points, let's call them merit points. So yeah, so the story of this one is uh, basically the humans have gone to this moon planet called Pandora and uh, they are seeking this valuable resource called Unobtainium. Probably the single dumbest name for a resource in cinematic history ever. Uh, so they want this unobtainium, which I just can't say with a straight face. Uh, but there are some local native people basically in their way. Well, from from a different from the correct point of view, actually the humans are in the Navi's way. But yeah, they're called Navi's. They're these blue alien guys that are um, basically just they're primitive. They use bows and spears, but they're definitely intelligent. They have their own language, their own culture and customs and all that. And uh, they also have like carbon fiber skin, making them a lot stronger and superior to humans uh, physically. So yeah, but um, basically we follow a human character called Jake Sully, who is a paraplegic and uh, he is called in after his brother who is doing this uh, interesting project basically passes away off screen, so Jake Sully takes up this mantle because they have the same DNA as each other, so the project won't go to waste. And basically what they're going to do is, um, Jake Sully, parapl paraplegic, which means he doesn't have, ah, he can't use his legs, right, he doesn't feel his legs, so he gets hooked up to a machine and he's able to control an avatar, which is a human-made replica of the Navi locals. And uh, this gives him his legs back because he can see and feel everything as a as a Navi avatar. And uh, his objective is to basically explore Pandora, learn about learn as much as about the Navi as he can. He's basically an inside spy um, for the humans because eventually the humans want to get rid of the Navi so that they can greedily take all the resources from Pandora. Um, but eventually, Jake Sully falls in love with. One of the Navi women, who is played by Zoe Saldana, and uh, this causes him to have a change of heart, and he now has to question himself which side he wants to be on, his human side or his Navi side, and um, yeah. So uh, the movie is, uh, like I said, basically the only positive here is, and not that it's to say the movie's bad, it's, it's a great movie, it really is, um, but the biggest and most noteworthy positive is the CGI the visuals, and the technology. This is one of the best looking 2000... No, this is the single best 2009 movie you will ever look at. It actually does hold up today. It might not look fantastic on the main menu here, but actually in the film, in action, it actually does hold up today, uh, and it's still somewhat impressive today. It's Again, there is obviously better stuff has come out, but this was 2009, and it was looking this good. It was blew our minds at the time. Uh, so this one really, without this movie, we would not have all of the epic CGI focused kind of films. A lot of those are bad, but they're not all bad. For example, a movie like Warcraft, we would not have movies like Warcraft if it wasn't for Avatar. Because this showed Hollywood that it was worth the investment to go all the way in uh, for, like, to invest so much money into high quality visuals and everything and create, crafting these sci-fi expensive worlds to spend time in, especially for two hours, 40 minutes. Um, so this is, a, this is a very important movie. And that's the main reason I'm reviewing it on this channel is because this is an important piece of cinema history. As far as the actual movie it goes, uh, like other than the technological marvels and all that, as far as the actual movie goes, 
It's fine. Uh, the characters, they're decent enough. You can root for them, you can empathize with them. The world's pretty interesting. Uh, there's plenty of lore building here and world building with all the various fauna and creatures and uh, traditions and customs and all that. Uh, so the movie itself is fine. The action is pretty good. Um, again, it doesn't hold up today, really, but it's still fine. Um, yeah, the, that, that's, a, that's really it. It's, it's basically the main point here is that it's an achievement and it's super important for filmmaking history. Uh, as far as the negatives go, well, I would argue the love interest subplot, like most Hollywood blockbusters, it's not that great here because it's actually, well, it's actually a little bit worse here than average because uh, it's a little bit confusing why, why a, uh, a female Navi would immediately, basically immediately fall in love with a human, um, a human spy against, remember there's societal pressures and all that, so like she's literally defying uh, the tradition and order and wishes of her tribe and family members to be with this human in some sort of Romeo Juliet situation, but it just, it wasn't super executed flawlessly. I think we can all agree on that. It, it's kind of, it's pretty fast and wasn't super impactful to me, so love interesting, could have been better. Um, I mean, this, this kind of gets illustrated by the fact that, uh, like, Jake Sully's now new life mate is, is barely in Way of Water. She's barely in the next movie, which I've already seen, so that kind of, that kind of, uh, drives my point further that she's not the greatest, she's not a terrible character, it's just the way they wrote this sort of love plot, eh, eh, not that great. I'd also argue, so I love movies that have humans as bad guys as well, specifically, I love when movies have Americans as bad guys. The reason for that is because it's rare. In Hollywood media, Americans are always the heroes, they always get the girl, etc, etc. So I like that this movie has Americans as the bad guys, but I still want to say it still wasn't perfect here. Um, they're basically one note and not fleshed out at all. They're just greedy, money, they're just greedy for money, so I would argue if I were making this movie, or if I were writing this script from scratch, um, I would have, I would have given the humans an angle other than greed. You can still have the greed in there, but have an angle other than greed so that, that we could create a moral dilemma for the audience because then it would force me as the viewer to pick a side. It's like, hmm, do I want to side with the humans? Do I want them to win or do I want the Navi to win? Instead, it's just by default Navi are the good guys. That's just how it is, right? Because of the way they're portrayed. So if there was some sort of maybe a crisis on Earth, like they really, really have to get unobtainium because, I don't know, you can write you can write whatever you want. Maybe there is some important medical pods. I just watched Elysium today, which had these medical pod things. So maybe there's these medical pods that cure cancer and you need unobtainium to feel them and children are going to die, little children with cancer are going to pass away if there's no unobtainium. Something like that. I don't know. But it, I think that would have been more effective instead of the flat, one note, humans bad guys, end of story. I, and again, I'm glad the humans are the bad guys, but I think it would have been even better if it was morally ambiguous or a little bit, they were just slightly more flushed out. Because it's basically the main bad guy in this is essentially just a, you know, generic warmonger in a mech suit, and then we get some CGI fights, so it's not exactly incredible. But I'm going to give Avatar a 8 out of 10, which is a pretty generous score by today's standards, but if I were watching this back in 2009, that is definitely the score. No, I probably would have given it like a 9 back in 2009, so I'm re removing that one point just for today's comparisons, but... Yeah, 8 out of 10 still a respectable score. I do think this one is slightly better than Way of Water. I had the privilege of watching Way of Water in, uh, in, in theaters in 3D, and I actually still think this one's slightly better. Uh, because this one gets to the point quicker, it has the novelty and charm of being the first. I also felt like the characters were working more effectively here. I honestly didn't give a shit about Jake Sully in Way of Water, but he kinda works in here. Um, so yeah, anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.